so when did this idea of kind of an obesity paradox, which I know you've written about, um, when did that start to become observed? I think the, the, that phrase obesity paradox has never been really crisply defined and whether it really is something that's a paradox is not clear. People use it to mean at least two different things. Um, one thing is that uh, there's this so-called U-shaped curve, more accurately concave upward, as a bathtub-shaped curve, if you imagine a, a Cartesian or XY plot in which the Y or ordinate is mortality rate or some function of it, and the X is BMI or relative body weight or something. So one is that it is U-shaped, that it's not monotonic increasing. And so people at the very thin end also die earlier than people in the middle, just as people at the very heavy end die earlier than people in the middle. You know, the Duchess of Windsor is supposedly said, you can never be too rich or too thin. <laughs> and she may have been right on the rich part, I don't know, haven't gotten there yet, but apparently not on the too thin part. Now we can argue whether it's causal, and there are lots of arguments about whether it's causal. But that's one thing, it's the idea that thinner people than sort of intermediate levels of BMI also die earlier. That's one part. The other part, is that even though obesity is associated with increased mortality rate or decreased longevity, that when you look at people who are sick or injured, they often live the longest. So somebody comes in with kidney failure or someone comes in after a major injury or a major infection, they're in the hospital, it's often the heaviest people that live longer. And that started to be talked about 10, 15 years ago, maybe. Um, it's very difficult to disentangle cause and effect. We can observe lots of associations, but it's just hard to know what to make of all of these associations and what's causal. There's so, as the philosophers say, the data are, uh, the hypotheses are underdetermined by the data. There are multiple hypotheses that are consistent with the data. That's why the randomized experiment allows us to do things that otherwise we can't do, it sort of eliminates more competing hypotheses. So. I don't think we know what's causal yet. We've thrown out a model, a uh, uh, man named Doug Childers and, Childers and I, who's a postdoc, who's a good mathematician working with me, in which we said, what if obesity makes it more likely that you get a major illness or injury? So it's not good for your health in that sense. Age, of course, also makes it more likely that you get a major illness or injury. But once you get a major illness or injury, being heavier, more obese, may reduce your risk of dying from it. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit Peter Atia, MD dot com forward slash about where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.